Greetings, denizens of the Empire. It's Jabari here. Happy Black History Month. For the past couple of years, the month of February has been a time where I've been posting short videos about the amazing accomplishments, achievements, and interesting facts about our black ancestors. From the system of divination practiced by the Yoruba people, which is based on binary code, to the Caesarian sections performed by pre-colonial Banyoro doctors, and even the practice of vaccination being taught to Americans by an African slave, based on traditions practiced by his people back in Africa. You can check out these videos at the end screen. So with that, I want to continue on with this tradition of posting more amazing black history during Black History Month. As with the tradition of this series, I want to take it a step further than your typical black history. As much as I am equally grateful as I am impressed with the civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. and Rosa Parks, the sad truth is that our mistreatment, struggle, and subsequent freedom against white oppression seems to be the only highlight of our history or greatness taught to us here in the West. In reality, there is so much more to our history than that, and it stretches back much earlier than our time here in the United States. Just as white people learn about the greatness of other white people throughout the past, even prior to the founding of the United States all the way back to their deep European roots in classical Greece and Rome, I think it's important that black people have the same luxury and I feel like it is absolutely necessary in order for us to have an appreciation for ourselves and our people. You can't fully and truly appreciate who you are without appreciating where you come from, so for the month of February, I'm going to be releasing a series of short videos describing several accomplishments, highlights, and just generally interesting facts about what was going on in Africa without the influence of Europeans. And without all the need to just focus all of our attention on Egypt or Carthage either. This series will be unapologetically focused on sub-Saharan African civilization. Before we continue though, and in the spirit of Black History Month, I want to thank Mizizi for sponsoring this video. Mizizi, meaning roots in the Swahili language, which just so happens to be the same language that my first name comes from, is dedicated to creating jerseys for the Black Diaspora. Whether in Africa, the Caribbean, the United States, or elsewhere, chances are, Mizizi already has you covered to represent your people, or your country, or even your favorite African-themed characters from Marvel and Disney. Check out their awesome jerseys at MizizishOp.com. Mathematics The centerpiece of everything that makes the modern world function properly. From simple measurements on building materials, or serving sizes on meals, and even more complex measurements of speed, fuel consumption, gravity, heat, and pressure on space rockets, mathematics are the pinnacle of what allows us humans to remain consistent and accurate with everything we do here in the 21st century. However, mathematics predate the modern era by several millennia and have existed long before the advent of writing systems. The current numeral system that we use today is known as the Arabic numerals, and as its namesake implies, it was brought to the West by Arabs who in turn learned it in India. It is notable for the presence of the number zero. Common forms of mathematics such as multiplication and division as well as algebra and calculus predate modern mathematics by thousands of years. Mathematics helps us prove things with certainty so that there is no question or confusion. It prevents disputes in the realms of finances, time, property, and territory. It even enables us to land on other worlds outside of Earth. With Africa being the origin of mankind, it should come as no surprise to us that the oldest known mathematical calculations ever recorded would be located there and that more complex traditions would have continued to pour out of the region over time. In the middle of the 20th century, Belgian professor Heinzen discovered a 10 centimeter long bone among several harpoon heads, all within stratified sand deposits along the shores of the Simliki River. Today the bone is known as the Eshango bone, a namesake taken from the Eshango village, a small fishing community near the border of the Democratic Republic of Congo and Uganda, right in the heart of Africa where it was found. 
It contains a shard of quartz at one of its ends, which extends about 2 millimeters out of the bone. It is believed that it may have been used for tattooing or engraving. At first glance, it just appeared to be a bone with some cut marks on it, but upon further inspection, the notches seem to have meaningful patterns. There is circumstantial evidence to suggest that the patterns are arranged in such a way that corresponds to a base 12 number system with sub-bases of 3 and 4. Dating of the bone has been very difficult due to a volcanic eruption in the region which interferes with radiocarbon dating. In any regard, the bone is known to be very ancient, being anywhere between 20,000 and 90,000 years old. As to be expected with this ancient age, it contains damage and wear from rainwater. It is believed to have a total of 167 or 168 notches arranged in three columns that extend down the length of the entire bone. The columns are also parallel with the others, with the only inconsistency being the lengths of the notches themselves and the numbers of notches contained in each group. Marshak suspected that the bone was used as a lunar calendar by ancient African women to track menstrual cycles. This theory holds considerable weight as bones, strings, and other devices continue to be used for calendars throughout pre-colonial African history, even in more recent times. Heinzelin believes that the numbers on the bone represent prime numbers, which predates the discovery of them by the classical Greeks. The aforementioned base 12 is known as duodecimal, and just to clarify, our current number system is base 10, meaning that we continue repeating numbers in increments of 10 over and over and simply add digits to the end every time we reach the next increment of 10. For example, after we reach 10, we go to 11, which is technically 10 plus 1. This scheme is more evident once we reach 13 and above, and even more so once we reach 20s, 30s, and so on and so forth. The system on the Ashango bone is believed to do the same thing only with the number 12. It may seem alien, but it's neither better nor any worse than our modern base 10 decimal system, just different. It is similar to how we count eggs by the dozen instead of by tens. This system having a base of dozens can be found throughout West Africa. The coral people give unique names to all numbers from 1 through 12, but then 13 and above retain these same names, but are prefixed by PL the latter of which represents 12. So basically 12 plus the respective single digit number. This system is analogous to how the English numbers 13 and above are suffixed by the word teen. In fact, the reason why we don't call the numbers 11 and 12 first teen or second teen is because their names predate our modern base 10 decimal system and have their origins in an ancient duodecimal system. Furthermore, Africa possesses several other counting systems of base 4, base 6, and even base 20. These vary greatly depending on their respective region or ethnic group. It has long been believed that Greece was the birthplace of mathematics. The Americas, China, and India all very clearly boasted their own independently developed mathematic systems. Later evidence indicated that the Arab world and ultimately Mesopotamia and the Nile Valley were the sources of European math. However, alternative, albeit highly criticized, theories suggest that the mathematical knowledge from the Nile Valley in turn came from an even earlier source, from Central Africa, radiating into West Africa, the Middle East, and eventually Eurasia. This theory is actually quite possible due to a route of similar traditions traceable back through these respective regions. Unfortunately, as with most of African history that indicates any level of complex human thought or innovation, this theory is highly scrutinized, despite there being strong evidence to support it. Regardless of any of these theories about the Ashango bone, it is known without the shadow of a doubt that it bears strong evidence of mathematics, and these mathematics are the oldest known in the history of the world. I hope you all enjoyed this short video. For more black history, stay tuned for this year's next episode of my black history series where we will discuss innovations, significant events, and interesting facts about black history far beyond the surface level knowledge that we are accustomed to learning on American soil. For sources, check out my website, linked below.
If you'd like to support future projects, you can do so there as well, or by clicking the join button below, or by becoming a patron. I hope you all enjoyed the video, thanks for watching as usual, and always remember, we don't come from nothing.